Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video, we are going to uh, go over some more of that consignment. Got a lot of questions about that, and uh, some of you guys have been watching the eBay and you've seen it, but I've got a lot more stuff going to auction. Many items I still have not shown. So for those of you who thought I was exaggerating with that half a million, you, I think you're going to find that that was uh, probably on the very low side of what he has uh, sent me to sell. But in addition, I'm still going to show you guys some of the stuff that I normally buy, or that I have bought. And then at the end, we've actually got quite a few packs to open today, several of the top Series 2 packs. And then, uh, yeah, I just hope you enjoy it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you guys is, uh, so I got in a collection of, uh, I'm going to show it to you after this. And uh, they actually sent this for free. They used this as protection. I thought it was kind of cool. But we've got some old top series cards here. You've got, you know, represented here, these are top series one. This is top series three. Again, one, three. Yeah. Well, yeah, all those are top series one or three. That's like a top series two right there with the Hitmon Lee. So you kind of got a, a variety here one, two, and three. Dragonite, people like that one. It's a tough one to get. There's Gengar, that's one of the ones we're uh, trying to pull. Scyther, I always like that artwork. And so I thought this was really cool that he used it, you know, to protect the cards. And he sent these in uh, with order. And he's actually got three of the clear cards. Now, what the actual purchase was for was, uh, see if you guys have, see if you guys recognize them. These are the, uh, this is the tryout set, or, you know, the teach cards. It's a 10 card set. And I do have, I think I have two sets. Both of them are graded or one's graded. Pikachu is always the most sought after. They're tough to grade because they're connected by those little perforation points. And what's cool about this collection is uh, some of them are actually still connected. I thought that was really cool. That one's about to come off. I've never had that before. Centret. There's the Bulbasaur, people like that one. And these two are connected as well. Sudowoodo and the Doduo. And <clears throat> I guess they're in two rows of five. I'm not really sure. Otherwise, uh, why would they have this here? Unless it wasn't... Well, I don't know. Maybe it's... Yeah. I would think two rows of five. And it probably just comes across from the left side. But it was a pretty cool purchase. I didn't pay a, a ton of money for them. It is really rare, but it's super niche. Not many people know about them. So in general, you can find these cards for pretty cheap. Now, I, I did have another Yu-Gi-Oh card that I was going to show you guys, but the wrong card was sent, so I'm having to do a return on it. What I'm going to show you next is part of the consignment. This is probably some of the most expensive items that was included. And you're going to... Uh, if you know what these cards are, you're probably going to realize it's pretty crazy. So what we have here is the uh, you got the Illusions Zoror um, design contest where basically people uh, drew these different pictures and they won them for like kindergarten, first grade, second grade, you know, so forth. And uh, it's a 10 card set. And um, each of the 10 winners, I believe, received 10 copies of each card. It was something like that. So like each of these is one of 100. You can see right there. They all either have the Zerua or the Zora Arc. And there aren't many of these available at all online right now. <clears throat> I've had a couple of these sets pass through my possession. And they're definitely worth way more now than what they used to be. Next up we have a Not Awake Birthday Pikachu. There are three birthday Pikachus that he sent to me with the English one then you have the Japanese the Japanese hollow this is the most this is probably the cheapest about a thousand dollars or so then you've got the English one I think it was around four thousand or so maybe five and then this one right here is like triple that and um, whether it actually pulled that price I don't know um, I just kind of put my price below the the two other lowest ones that were online and we'll just kind of see where it goes from there eventually if these cards do not sell then they will um, either go to auction or they'll be pulled by the consignee here's a big one you got a victory orb with the Mew gym at 10 super popular card victory ring let me see yeah. 
got the victory ring with the Pikachu Gym at 10 and here's another one of the victory rings but without the Pikachu I have one just like this in auction right now this one I put into a buy now and if you look at the back side it is in much better shape than the other one which I believe this one did have some edge wear the victory ring Pikachu yeah you can see that bottom left corner it's so weird like with new back cards you turn them at a certain angle and you can't see anything at all and then if you angle it the right way then it stands out quite a bit but yeah I did make a note of this in the the listing for this one that I put to buy now just in case you are looking at buying it got a championship arena 10 I love the artwork on this one you have a grand party trainer got that classic foiling on it here we got a shining Mew gem at 10 beautiful card another victory orb but this one doesn't have the Mew so it doesn't bring quite as much of a premium. Then we have the Shining Magikarp and Shining Gyarados. I've had a lot of questions about these. Um, you're welcome to make offers on this stuff as always. Here we go, we have a Mysterious Pearl. This is a Mint 9. And we also have the 10. And I believe we have one of the 9's already in auction. Here we have a Players Club Mew. Gym Mint 10. And then to finish off the buy now that were listed yesterday, we have the Master Scroll, which if you guys remember, we had a PSA 6 that went to auction and it pulled like 8900 or so. Now you can't even find them anywhere close to that price from what I'm seeing, unless I just searched wrong yesterday. But the Gym Mint 10s are way up there. So a lot of really cool cards here. I hope you guys... Uh, enjoy seeing these kind of things for me I, when I list these cards I have to do a lot of extra research and so it's cool I get to expand my knowledge base some of these cards I didn't realize the exact quantities that were out there like the uh, championship arenas and the pearls and that kind of stuff yeah there were some more cards from the consignee that went to auction last night and then we'll show you some more that are going to auction tonight and again all these auctions start off at a penny and they just go for whatever they go for so usually that's your best opportunity to uh, pull something for really cheap all right, so we got the Pikachu's Easter. On the flip side, a lot of times auctions, they can, if there's none others listed, you get a couple motivated buyers, bidders. Um, sometimes prices can go higher than the buy downs. But here we have the Turtonator. We've got all four of these that are for the Easter's, um, uh, the, the Easter promo. Here we've got a Misty's Polytoad from the Theater Limited Verse. This is uh, one of the signature cards that we're going to be uh, auctioning off. He has several other or signature cards that are available. I'm going to try to spread them out, you know, one or two a day or so. And um, I'm going to show you guys the, the back side of this card. Because he told me that uh, he's never really found that Trent going for like the PSA 10, Auto 10 has helped out any of the... Uh, the prices so he just always went for authentic so that does some a lot of times when you see authentic you think well the cards probably in bad shape but that's not the case and a lot of these cards I am showing the front and the back and if you guys are wondering about anything specific I can get you more details but like this one right here is in really good shape and it's a very popular card the Luigi Pikachu all right sorry I had to pause the the video there I don't know if you could hear that stuff going on in the background but my uh, wife, she had uh, some earbuds in and she was coming through testing some cleaning supplies on the doors. So that was really hard for me to think because it was quite loud and squeaky on uh, on my end. So I don't know. I hope it wasn't too loud on y'all's end. Um, all right. So next up, we have a Battle Festa 20th anniversary Festa. I thought it was Battle Festa. I'm not really sure what the actual name of it is. Yeah. Uh, 2016 so yeah it's a 20th anniversary card so I was trying to make sure I saw it there I saw it there but I was looking at the date there and uh, this Pikachu in which this one is pretty popular so I expect it to do very well we've got a hyper metal chain deck for the Di Dialga EX got a unique low kids both uh, the 96 and the 97 for the warm Pikachu this one's pretty cool you got the Meowth this you used to be able to get these in those fruit roll-up boxes and uh, they're pretty tough to get in a tin. I've had several of them in the past. Got some base first edition, a couple lightning energy, or a couple of energies. Got lightning, psychic, grass, fighting. Then we're going to finish off with a Charmeleon. Uh, got another one of these CGC 9 uh, Shiny V Charizards. Got a Venusaur EX Mint 9, a Lugia EX Mint 9, Registeel EX, and then we're going to finish off with the Pokemon Day Pikachu. So I'm going to put these back over here. And that last Pikachu uh, Pokemon Day was a, a 10 
think the other one I showed you guys was a nine. And then we've got a handful that are going up tonight. Maybe some more. I might add more to it. So, so he's just got a ton of stuff. And I mean, all of it's really good. Like a lot of this stuff, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a variety of pricing. You know, some of these may end under under hundred, but many are gonna end over a thousand. Some over ten thousand. It's kind of crazy to, uh, to think about when you're thinking about Pokemon cards. You know, you, you go back three years and you, you'd be thinking, well, there's no way you know those cards are being those prices. But you know, we've seen such an uptick in certain areas of Pokemon. All right, so uh, I've got another shiny V Charizard. This one's an eight point five. We actually have a perfect ten CGC card, which is pretty cool. It has a ten in all four of the categories. It's really tough. It's a lot tougher than you might think. We got a Magmar first edition, Nidorino, Raticate, Doduo, and Drowsy. And then we're going to throw up a few Shadowless cards. We've got the War Turtle, Bulbasaur, Charmander. We've got a Red Cheeks Pikachu. And then this is actually a card that I'm considering buying myself. Um, we're going to let this one go through and then, you know, I might buy the other one. Um, if we can agree on the price, but this is a uh, non-holographic Meowth, you can see right there. Uh, this is one case where the non-holo version is much more rare than the holographic version, and I've got a couple myself, but I don't have a 10, so um, hopefully I can snag the other one, but you know, I'm going to talk with him personally about that, because a lot of people, <clears throat> it's kind of like a no-no with like consignment places or whatever, but you know, it's just me, it's not like I'm, you know, there's no way I can bid on my own stuff, and no way I'd, I would ever do that, and um, I just want to make sure, like, if I ever do buy something from my consignee, it's completely 100% transparent. Um, next up, we have a Misty's Tears, and this is the band artwork, Naked Misty. Uh, there are two different versions. You have the one in the uh, that comes from the theme deck that doesn't have the rarity symbol, and then you have this one right here, which comes from the booster pack, which does. Then we've got a Gem Metal card, Reverse Hollow. We have the Victory Medals, first, second, and third, the LP promos, all Gem at 10. This is an exchange, please, Gem Mint 10 card, so expect this one to do very well. Great backside. I think the other one we showed was a 9. This is the birthday Pikachu, but this is actually the non-holographic gold stamp. So he actually sent four birthday Pikachus in Gem Mint 10 condition. We have a Blastoise EX Crystal Gardens, but this is the national championship version, which is also why, well, no, it should be non-holographic. I was getting ready to say it's a, a variation, but it's not. And the way you can kind of tell if you don't know, uh, B is at the, kind of like the beginning of the alphabet. So it would have, if it was in the hollow slot, then it would be like number one, two, three, four, something like that. Because it's at number 14, there's no way there was 13 Pokemon before that that had um, names that were like Alakazam, Arcanine, you know, all the way, you know, before you get to Blastoise. So what happens is when you get through with all the hollows, it's like the first one's Alakazam, the next one would be Blastoise, you know, so forth, kind of like with base set, but it'd be like that for uh, Christmas. Crystal Gardens as well. And then when they get through with the holographics, uh, say at number 12 or 13, then they restart over uh, with the rares at the beginning of the alphabet again. And that's what we saw as a trait for like how they did the rarities and uh, the card numbering through generation one, two, three, I believe four, and then they changed it in generation five where they started doing it by type where grass was at the beginning of the set, you know, number one, two, three, four, and then after grass, it's like fire, then I think it's water, lightning, psychic, rock, or it might be rock, psychic, yeah, I get those two confused sometimes, and then if you have a, I believe it's darkness, then metal, if you have dragon, or it might be, it's like fairy dragon, colorless is last, and then you go into trainers and that kind of stuff, so... And next up, we have the Pokemon Center. This is the number 40. And so the Lucky Stadium, the number 41, we saw a couple of those that are going to auction. This is the second rarest one. The number 40 is less desired just because it doesn't have that Charizard uh, picture in there, but it is still very rare and it should do pretty good in auction. Next up, we have a Craze Club promo Skitty. So a lot of people have no idea this card exists. And um, but it does, and it's kind of it'll be interesting to watch. TV reporter, reverse holo. You, would, you might be thinking this is just a standard set card, Reverse Hollow, but it's actually uh, one of the rarest Reverse Hollows ever printed just because the initial part of the run did not have Reverse Holographic TV reporters. It was only a very small part of the run. Uh, they got these, and this pulled a high-grade 9. Uh, for the most part, anytime I've run across these, they've uh, been in pretty bad condition. So I've never seen a 10. I'm sure they do exist, but... Um, 
or there may be one on eBay now. I don't know. I haven't looked one up, but this is the highest uh, graded copy of a TV reporter reverse hollow that I have ever had in my possession. Next up, we have a Players Mew, Players Club Mew, and this got a ten. Beautiful card. I think again, I think it'll do well. We have these two Alto Mares, Ladias and Ladios. Gem Mint Tims from the uh, Theater Verse Limited Verse series. You, they had these like little uh, decks, uh, kind of like the Karen's Tarantar deck, and um, great looking cards. I mean, that's where the, that Polytoad you saw come from for as well. And here are a couple of autos that I was telling you about. Uh, this one right here is the Milo Tick. It's a reverse holo from Dragon Frontiers. You know, it's a reverse holo because it has that, uh, it says Dragon Frontiers right there. But it was signed by, uh, who is it? I can't remember the name, uh, but I've got it in the, uh, I'll make sure it's in the title. And um, this one's in pretty good shape. I'll show it to you guys. See right there. Probably would have done well if it had been uh, created for condition. And then last we have a Fakuda uh, Gold Star Charizard. And you can see right there it's both signed in English and Japanese. Authentic. And what's kind of weird about this is like if you look at it straight on um, and then you you tilt it, you know, a lot of that uh, whitening kind of goes away, but then it can come back if you hit it at the right angle. But this does have some whitening around the edge. Um, it's pretty prevalent on the bottom and the sides. Nothing like super heavy on the damage itself, but you can definitely tell that it's there. Uh, so this would be more for the rarity of the card itself and the signature. All right, guys. So that's a lot of stuff that I just threw at you, but I hope you enjoyed, you know, seeing these different slabs. I'm gonna continue to show them as long as you know you guys do want to see them, because I realize a lot of you don't actually bid or buy on the stuff, but you kind of like seeing seeing them and maybe hearing a little bit about the history. So I'm gonna jump uh, now into some pack openings. So uh, we have one guy who bought a heavy fossil in three top series, and then another guy who bought nine top series two packs. So we've got quite a few of these packs to open up. So it's going to make for a little bit of a longer video. And um, we'll just hope that you know these are in pretty good shape. You know, you all we're, all we're having to pull all of those last holographic cards off the back. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much par for the course when it kind of when it comes to these uh, rainbow foil uh, top series sets. But you never know, maybe we'll get lucky and something nice will come through and it'll be in great shape. All right, so we got an EP24, Hitmon Lee. That's a good pull. Got a Lickitung. Pulled several of those yesterday with the Burger King. <laughs> got the Cubone. Thanks to all of you guys who were giving me advice too about the thumbnail. I didn't realize that was like a huge thing. Uh, several of you did say you still didn't receive the notification like normal, but. Um, it seemed like the majority of everybody seemed like, oh, well, I saw the thumbnail, and I was like, oh, that's not, I, I don't know who that is, so you didn't, you didn't click on it, which I didn't, so I didn't realize, you know, my crappy thumbnails was uh, that signature, so uh, I appreciate that, and um, I'll try to keep them, keep them down in the dumps. <laughs> All right, so we got Rhyhorn, and you got yourself a clear card, which is cool, and good thing about clear cards, I believe, yeah, these pull off a lot easier, so you've got a nice Pikachu, and your Rhyhorn is probably going to be in uh, really nice shape, too. We um, put the sleeves off to the side. I had uh, Nick here, and uh, I put most of the sleeves and stuff on this table to the side because we were checking out some of the uncut sheets. He's an error collector as well, and um, we were just going over some of that. He looked at the uh, test sheet and gave me his opinion on the authenticity of it. Man, you can see right there where that uh, that clear card was. Kind of cool the way that works out. Alright, so there's your ride on, and I'm gonna put your Pikachu in here because it's probably worth more than the ride on. And these clear cards can do much better at PSA. Alright, next up, pack number two. Oh, I don't think I did a shout out, so let me go back to that. Bam! All right, so this is for Colin. He bought nine top series two packs, and he said the Pokemon Marketplace Facebook, and I'm looking for Charmander, Charmeleon, Charmander, or Muck, Hall of Fools for my favorite Mewtwo. All right, so if, uh, if we're talking about the top series packs, you, I don't think you can get those in here. Muck, I can't remember his number, but we've definitely seen him, so he should be in top series too. And uh, uh, maybe we can pull you one of these. Um, I can't remember what all comes on the clear cards. I know there's Scyther, there's 
We've got the, the different types of Pikachus. There's a Charizard. Maybe we'll just get you a Charizard. That'd be kind of nice. And maybe uh, there'll be a Charmander or something like that on one of the episode cards. Move these to the side. All right, so we've got the Kingler. Episode 21. Little Sabrina. Execute. Got episode 22 with the Gengar, the Tower of Terror. It's weird how they, these cards are upside down, back to back, which is pretty common with anything that was Pokemon and Tops. Let's see if we can get these apart. There we go. Got the episode 15, and then your hollow is Ash Ketchum. <laughs> Pretty suiting for a, uh, a character that you would want. All right, next up, pack number three, Ron Collin. Let's start off with Kangaskhan. Then we have Tangela. Episode five, Ghastly. Got a Kingler. And an episode 19. Ooh, you got a chance. To, maybe you get a double chancey. Chancey Hollow. Oh, you got one of the checklist hollows. That's pretty cool. I always like pulling those in these. In most sets, you don't want to pull the checklist kind of card, but with the top series, honestly, it's not too bad of a pull. Pack number four. With the, the wrap. Oh, I'll put the wrap off this side. I was like, where did it go? Counting. I wasn't counting four packs. I was only counting three. But that was because I put the, the wrapper for the first pack down below. All right, so we have Jesse. Got episode 25. Got a Ponyta. Electrode. Cloister. Farfetched. Episode 13. The Giant Dragonite. Oh, and you got a Kingler. That one up his sleeve. Still waiting for that Tops Charizard clear card to come out. All right, we'll start off with the Slowpoke. Then we got an episode four, episode nineteen, Executor, episode two. A lot of episode cards. Another one, episode six. What's that? Look, something got stuck in between the cards. Wow. It's like another piece of a card. What the? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Look, you can see it. It's like a piece of maybe it was a slit off. But you still did get you a nice little ponytail. You know what? That little that little slit may have saved. Well, no, you can kind of see it in between. I was gonna say it looked like it saved it from cracking up, but. Uh, May have left a little bit of an indent across it. Little top series. I remember we were at a, at the Hartford Collectors event. Uh, who was it? It was Silver Snorlax. Yes. It was a top. It was some kind of top series. But we ended up pulling like a Mew out of there, which is pretty cool. All right, episode seventeen. Todd. A slow bro, a seal, Ash Ketchum, Do Duo, Drowsy. We haven't had any special cards since the first one, right? Oh, you got a Sabrina Hollow. Episode 21. Three more packs. Starting off with Muck. You didn't get the Hollow yet. Right on, Episode 1, Rhyhorn. Episode 9, Cubone, Lickitung, and a Hollow Krabby. You got the Hollow Kingler too, so they kind of go together. Well, they definitely go together. Krabby evolves into Kingler. Two more packs. Ooh, I feel like those rays are for an electric. 
you got a double electric. Maybe that'd be a well, you're not gonna picture. Maybe some magneton back there as well. Dodrio, James, episode seven. There's another Krabby, episode nineteen. Oh, did you get another piece stuck in between? It's so weird. Hitmonchan. Definitely makes the cards peel through faster. But it's like they shredded a card and somehow pieces of it got stuck. And you got yourself an electrode. It's strange. I've never seen that before. One more pack to go, man. So your uh, Pokemon Marketplace Facebook. Uh, I assume that's a community that you're a part of, Colin. I think you said you and your buddies were going to be watching some of this stuff and uh, checking it out for nostalgic purposes. You know, Top Series 2 isn't too bad of a pack to open up because, you know, they're really cheap. You get three of these for $100, $120 or so. But um, as you can see, you know, a lot of times you can't get too much value out of them because they don't have the starters and you don't have, you know, the good condition holographic cards in the backside. But you can get a lot of value uh, from the nostalgia itself if you're just looking to open up packs and you're wanting to uh, just kind of relive a little bit of your childhood. Let's see if I can get this one off. There we go. So last pack magic is for a slowpoke. All right, man. Well, I appreciate uh, your purchase and letting us open up your packs here on the channel to share together. And I'm going to set this stuff aside and I'll have it out to you very soon. I'll make sure to get your other pack wrapper as well. Now, we're not done with Top Series 2 because we've got four more packs to open up. This is for Matthias. He's got a heavy fossil booster pack. We'll open that up last, and he has three top series two booster packs. Now, if I remember correctly, we didn't have any sticker cards in that last video. And we had uh, just one clear, which was the Pikachu. So hopefully uh, we can maybe hit one in these three packs. Slow bro. We still got the clear Charizard lurking. I, can't, I assume there's a clear Charizard in series two. I can't even remember if there's multiple series. Oh look, you got, you got the Squirtle. And a Cloyster. I thought for a second there was going to be a War Turtle. So let me put these in sleeves. So you did hit one yourself. Get it in there. There we go. There's your Cloyster. So not a bad pull, right off the bat. Pack number two, another muck right on the front. Right on episode one, Electrode, Voltorb, Cassidy. Episode 16. Oh, you got episode five. Showdown in Pewter City. Going up against Brock. Pikachu had a hard time with Onyx. All right, last top series two pack. So we've got episode 14, we've got a shelter, checklist card, drowsy, episode 11, magnemite, wheezing, and a Kangaskhan. There you go. Seems like Kangaskhan has been pretty elusive altogether in this one, just like he is in the real game. you got to get him in the safari zone. All right, last pack for you, Mathis. We've got a fossil heavy booster pack. So that means you're guaranteed a hollow. There are still heavy fossil packs available. I know we've opened up a ton. I had quite a few of them. I had over three boxes worth. And um, so far, all of them have hit hollows, and we're only getting heavier as we go. All right, so we have Horsey, Gambler, Recycle, Tentacool. Got a Cloister, Kingler, Sand Slash, Krabby, Kabuto, Energy Search, and... Oh, I got another Hypno. So I think we've seen several Hypnos at this point. Until the centering is off. It's got a thicker border on the right side and the bottom. The hollow foil looks clean. About as, as we would expect on a Hypno. And then the back corners. They look clean too. So I think really the only issue with this one is a little bit of centering. But the condition itself is really nice. So congratulations on your pull there for the condition. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll try to do another one very soon. Thanks.